Welcome back to another episode of the Todd Durkin Impact Show. And boy, oh boy, am I fired up today. Yes, I am uh, fired up because I just got done with a great workout, a great quiet time, and I'm feeling like a million bucks. I'm recording today from the home office, and uh, I'm excited because I'm getting ready to fly back to North Carolina. That's right, where as this episode drops on uh, Monday, October the 21st, uh, it is a big, big day. My speaker's course is dropping on the 21st, and we got a great group of people for the next 12 weeks. Three months are going deep on speaking and what it's going to take to uh, deliver great, impactful messages worldwide. So I'm excited today. I hope you're excited today. Maybe you're out for a walk. Uh, if you're out for a walk, today's Q&A episode Thank you for those of you who have uh, fired in some questions via my community. Uh, thank you for sending those messages. Again, I read my community text messages all the time. If you are not yet a part of community, make sure you're part of it. Uh, I'll give you the phone number right now so you could take a, a picture on the show notes or just write it down as we speak. You can stop walking if you're working out. Uh, 619-304-2216. That is my cell number. Yes, it's my cell number. 619-304-2216 is my community text. And uh, several of you have uh, piped in with some great questions I'm going to answer today. I think they're going to serve everyone uh, with that. So get ready to buckle up your bootstraps. Also, uh, we are less than a month away from Montana. For those of you who are going to be in Whitefish, Montana with me, November 14th to the 17th, you're in for a real treat. If you are not yet in and you want to be there, this is the last call. You have about a week left to pull the trigger if you want to be with me and about 85 other fire breathing dragons passionate purpose-driven souls who are ready to finish this year strong and make 2025 a great year it's called rise and shine in 25 and i'll be coaching you with my new god Size dreams planner it's going to be an awesome time just go to toddurkin.com if you want to be in montana pull the trigger you won't regret it um it's going to be an awesome time i can't wait it's going to be coming up here in just a few weeks but today we have an awesome episode because we've got awesome questions for you, and I'm going to get through five of them. Five. Keep your questions coming, and I'll I'll answer more questions here in an upcoming episode. But uh, these questions deal with energy. They deal with faith. They deal with wisdom and parenting and gratitude and, and so much more as well. So I'm going to dive right on in. Uh, to our first question and this questions uh this first question comes from mike mum the fire breathing dragon himself it says you have relentless energy td can you run down your daily routine of nutrition workout and mindset well uh i can do that and i will do that right now so uh here's what i want to preface it by saying um right now I'm specifically uh, fired up more than normal. I'm not sure why, because I've been on the road more than ever. Um, I'm I'm very on point with a lot of these things right now. I'm not always on point as much as I want to be, but I think as 2025 nears and gets closer and, and here in 2024, um, I think as I called each of you to step up your game on the physicality and the mentality and the spirituality, uh, I asked each of you to make some big goals for Q4, uh, quarter four of 2024. And um, I'm, I'm doing the same thing with y'all. But it, as it relates to the question, I'm going to start with mindset because it all starts between the dome. Um, you know, how do you get your mind right all the time? Well, obviously, y'all can read the book, get your mind right. But for the sake of the podcast, um, I listen to a podcast three to four days a week. When I'm out for a walk with the Jersey Dog, 30 minutes a day, minimally. Um, I'm listening to a podcast. Normally it's more than three to four days a week. Uh, I'm out right now working out six days a week. Uh, that was something that on October 1st, I said, I'm going to really amp up these next 90 days. And, uh, I love walking or working out and listen to podcasts on a myriad of topics. Um, the other thing when it comes to mindset, is quiet time. Uh, I've been getting up a little bit earlier than normal, that 4.30 to 5 o'clock without an alarm clock. Um, I don't know if it's because I'm excited <laughs> for what's going to happen that day or because I've got a lot of my mind about what is going to happen. Um, Y'all can relate to that, but I've been getting up early and uh, early to bed, early to rise. And uh, I love the quiet time 
before there's any action in the house. Just the Jersey dog and I are hanging in the home office where I'm um, creating this podcast right now uh, to get that quiet time for, you know, 10 to 20 minutes where I can just sit and think and be quiet and have my journal open and pray and listen and pray and listen and listen and pray. Um, if I can get 20 minutes of quiet time a day, most days of the week, my mind is going to be right because my soul is right. My spirit uh, is a little bit more connected uh, with God. Uh, most days of the week, I said, I'm working out. And the other one, lastly, when it comes to mindset, is um, I've got like five different books I'm reading right now, um, but my goal is five to 10 pages minimally a day. So sometimes it's in the morning, many times it's in the evening when going to sleep. But uh, reading a book is always a great way where it's not just scrolling on Instagram. Um, as much as I love Instagram, going to sleep when you can really just focus your mind versus needlessly looking at everyone else's life. I think reading a book is a great way to get your mind right as well. On the work workout side, as mentioned, um, not only am I working out six days a week, four days a week I'm lifting and the six days a week I'm doing cardio. Now the cardio for me is typically between 60 to 75%, a little bit lower level um, percentage wise on the, the heart rate max, but 60, 75%, whether it be a walk, um, some elliptical, but six days a week of the cardio. And then I'll follow that up with four days lifting. And then Along with that, and this is crucial, this is really important, is the nutrition, uh, the nutrition and supplementation. Let me just share a few of the things that Mike asked about, you know, can you run down your daily routine with nutrition and supplementation? Um, one thing that I've been really focusing on here and it helps is number one of is increasing my protein intake, uh, getting two shakes a day. Why is that important? Because as you know, for those of you who get sugar cravings like I do and the chocolate covered almonds still continue to somehow find their way into the house, <clears throat> Melanie, <clears throat> um, they find their way into the house and, um, I, man, it, it it never goes good if I'm hungry and and those chocolate covered almonds and I are having a little conversation. But when you increase your protein intake, it satiates your appetite and it's going to reduce your sugar cravings. So for me, protein is the key with each and every meal. If I can get 40 to 50 grams of protein per meal and supplement um, some protein shakes one to two times a day, that's really going to help reduce the sugar cravings. And for me, sugar is the downfall. Sugar is the devil, I always say, right? So um, protein intake. The other one is meal prepping. Number two on that meal prepping, I always mess up at lunch. I get working, I skip lunch. And the next thing I know, I've gone seven, eight hours without eating lunch. That's not good. I talk about in number three, it's all about you know meal meal timing and eating more frequently, smaller meals more frequently. So I've been meal prepping and meal prepping allows me um, to bring that and just real quick, throw it in the microwave and uh, whether it be rice and vegetables or a salad, uh, trying to eat a salad a day, uh, meal prepping has been very important. I've been doing that. Um, well, getting back into it here in the month of October because I want to win this quarter like you. Uh, the other one that's the hard one, uh, Mike, it, as he asked, is uh, no no bread, no gluten. It's a Robert Yang thing. Robert's always great when he's on a podcast, but uh, when I get tested uh, being gluten sensitive, it's, man, you talk about breads, pasta, pizza, the things I love the most, uh, bagels, <laughs> all these things that we love. Well, those are full of gluten and um, uh, trying to be as gluten free as possible. No bread, no gluten has been a big, significant um, step when it comes to energy. You say you have relentless energy. Um, I find that when I'm not eating gluten, I'm more energized. Water intake, water is huge. I'm not sure why, but most of us have a problem hydrating up enough 110 ounces of water for me, but that's half your body weight in fluid ounces of water. Half your body weight in fluid ounces of water, um, water intake. And the last one I'd say is, um, and this is discipline, no dessert, no dessert. Oh, I should say dessert typically is a protein shake because I go downhill at night after dinner thinking I need dessert because I deserve dessert. Don't laugh at me because you're probably in the same boat. But if I have dessert is a protein shake ch and, and it's chocolate almond milk with two scoops of vanilla protein, um, 
then that's a great way to have, quote, dessert. But it's a healthy dessert, which is going to, again, satiate your appetite for, for sugar. And then, you know, let me just add this. My wife reminded me this the other day. Remember, it's okay to be hungry. It's okay to be hungry. I don't know why in our culture we feel like as soon as we're hungry, we have to eat. No, you don't. Every time you don't have to eat because you're hungry. Um, we're far from starving uh, in our culture, and it's okay to be hungry every now and then. I remind myself as I get ready to hop on a plane, like, it's okay if the belly's a little hungry. It's okay. So remind yourself, it's okay to be hungry today. Uh, I'm not saying go all day without eating and make that consistent. No, that's not good. But as you're spacing your meals out and you got your meal timing and you're making good choices, it's the discipline uh, to do the little things ongoing consistently over time, not five days a week, um, but uh, six and a half days a week that uh, you're eating right. And then lastly, when it comes to the energy aspect, um, I'm going to just calm comment on um, supplementation. And uh, as y'all know, I came out with a new supplement line a few months ago, and I'm a big advocate of my own my own brand because that's why I came out with it because I'm using it. But the one that I really want to focus on today is the greens drink in the morning um, because every morning I'm doing the greens drink. Now, I do it with water. And somebody like, man, greens and water just doesn't taste good. Remember, if you're eating really well, it's not always going to taste great. This tastes pretty darn good for water. If you want to get a little crazier, but it has a high sugar content, if you're going to do juice, you could always put it in juice or put the greens in a shake and you can put it in your protein shake as well. Sometimes I'll do two greens uh, shakes uh, throughout the day, but I love the greens in the morning, which really just fortifies me. You, I, I feel like I, I get woken up when I have the greens uh, drink. So um, that's one. Uh, I'm doing my pre-workout again. I'm working out six days a week. So I've got the, the pre-workout drink, which has some beta alanine in there and beta alanine is good for strength and endurance and mental clarity. Uh, the branch chain amino acids. I love BCAAs. I've been taking BCAAs for years. I think it helps with sustainable energy. Um, I find that our line, it's called the Totterkin Impact Nutrition line. The BCAAs, they taste really good um, and they're great for you. I want to um, recommend, uh, there's been a, almost like an upswing and up, up, uh, uptick again of the use of creatine. Uh, I've always been a fan of creatine. Um, and this is for both men and women, not only for strength, but I know Dr. Gabrielle Lyon came out with a, a great book um, and a huge proponent of creatine as well. When you look at the research on that, um, uh, it's, a, it's a supplement that you may want to uh, use as part of your program unless you're eating about five pounds of meat a day probably not <laughs> so last two would be sleep uh, i've got a sleep product the melatonin between the greens and the sleep product the melatonin i love it and uh i just ran out of it the other day i'm like darn it i don't have any in advance i'm going on the road so i'm going on the road without th that so i'm like trying to figure out how to get my sleep product in there because um, melatonin is a great, great, uh, supplement for you before you go to sleep. And then obviously the last one is protein. Uh, this is a whey protein, uh, both vanilla and chocolate I have. But, uh, when you talk about energy, Mike, mom, you ask about, you have relentless energy. It comes down to nutrition is 90% of it. And then you got the 10% supplementation side. So it's not because you have these, you know, six different supplements, you're going to all of a sudden have this great energy. It's the supplement on top of good nutrition on that. And you got to be working out and you got to have your mind right. And they all work hand in hand. And lastly, let me just state this when it comes to energy. Energy comes from sleeping right. Because if you don't sleep right, I don't care what you tell yourself, you're not going to feel great. So energy comes from sleep. Energy comes from exercise, moving, move your body, right? Motion is lotion and movement is very good. I heard y'all. Medicine. Motion is lotion and movement is medicine. Energy also comes from number three, people. It comes from people in your life and events in your life. So when you're in a room of great positive people, your energy gets an uptick. When you're in the room, let's say in Montana in November, it's going to be incredible energy. And that energy fuels you. 
So being around people, I mean, just look back at the pandemic, how drab we were and depressed we were because we weren't around people. I don't care if you're an introvert or an extrovert. People are going to help energize you. So sleep, exercise, people. And the last one I'll say in the last part of this question, when it comes to, you know, you have relentless energy, run down your routine. Um, energy comes from dreams. Energy comes from dreams. And um, I'm getting really excited right now because I'm working on the God Size Dreams Planner. I'm presenting it to those who are in the room in Montana. And then for those who are not in the room in Montana, it'll come a couple weeks after. And this is when you start really working on your life and your year and your dreams and what you're going to be doing because your dreams should fuel you. Your dreams should motivate you. Your dreams should wake you up and get you out of bed and, and get you fired up um, on that. It's okay to be a little nervous. It's okay to be a little scared. It's okay that your dream's like, I have no idea how I'm going to get this done and accomplished. I don't have the money to do this. I don't have the influence to do this. I don't know how. I don't have the answers to this. Don't worry. Your dreams fuel you. And when you share your dreams with the world or your family or your community, it's amazing how things come together because it energizes you and people are either attracted or not to the energy that you have. So just know this when it comes to that question is how do you get that energy? It's sleep. I've learned about that and I've shared my, my, um, whole process of discovering um, last year in 2023 that I had sleep apnea. I wasn't sleeping. And that's why I was exhausted. That's why I did get burnt out. That is why I made some of the key decisions I made in my life because I was so exhausted and burnt out. I couldn't keep going. And then I discovered I had sleep apnea. You can't do anything without sleep. So if that's you, there's some habits that you can tweak, or certainly if you're uh, a candidate, get tested for sleep apnea to make sure you don't have it. And only about 10% of the population has it. But if you have that, you need to address it so you can get your dreams back, your energy back, and so forth. So great question, Mike Mum. I, I, sorry I went a little deep on that, my friends, but hey, it's all about energy. And if you got the energy, uh, you're going to have a great, great day, a great week, a great month, a great quarter, and a great year and a great life. So keep the energy up on that. Um, uh, S underscore Tollers, uh, S underscore Tollers ask great question. What's your faith journey? What is your faith journey? Let me sit down on this one. Um, one of the advantages of being in the home office here was standing up at the standing desk. But I want to share here what's your faith journey. Good question on this. Um, I'll make this as short as possible. But, um, you know, growing up as the youngest of eight children in New Jersey, Brick, New Jersey, um, eight kids were a big Catholic family. And uh, when mom and dad got divorced when I was just five years old, um, we'd go to church every Sunday. We'd go to St. Dominic's Church. Still remember, because after mom and dad split, I would ride my bike um, uh, about 15 minutes through the woods to St. Dom's. I don't, kids, I wouldn't recommend that today, but, uh, well, go to church, I'd recommend, but not riding your bike 15 minutes through through the woods, through the forest uh, on that. And um, that was the one hour a week that I actually felt just at home. I felt peace. I didn't know what peace was at, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old. But I knew that when I was in church um, on a Saturday evening or a Sunday, that I just felt this peace about me that couldn't be replicated. And I felt like that's where I was supposed to be. Fast forward to when I was in college. Um, when I was in college, we were at a Friday night chapel service before uh, one of our football games at William and Mary. And there was this pastor, his name was Freddie Mitchell. I'll never forget it because I was sitting in the right side of the room in the second, uh, the second row. And Pastor Freddie Mitchell was talking about God. And um, he said something I'll never forget. And it was a very meaningful day because he started talking about a relationship versus a religion. Like, you have to have a relationship with God. It's not about a religion. It's not religion because you're Catholic or you're Protestant or you're Jewish or you're this. It's about a relationship with God and a relationship with Jesus. And for the first time, despite me always going to church, it really made sense about the relationship because I remember talking to God and praying to God when I was younger, when mom and dad were going through tough times and I was an athlete growing up about where's it going to end up. And here I am. And uh, it was that day it was my freshman year in college where I um, I accepted Jesus as as my savior, and um, that was a really important time because it wasn't long thereafter that my father passed away of a heart attack, and 
you know, it's funny how God works, but for me, um, you know, at the age of 20, except in Jesus, like, you know, he was in my heart and we all have ups and downs and we have detours and roadblocks and everything else. But that was the first time I really started to develop a relationship, um, a deeper relationship with God. And then lastly, just fast forward um, to even today, the faith journey. I believe uh, as your faith journey deepens, there's people who come into your life that can make you a stronger believer, a stronger um, man or woman of faith. And um, I've been blessed with some amazing people. Pastor Miles McPherson has been in my life for 27 years um, uh, and through the Rock Church. And then about a decade ago, Pastor David Jeremiah started uh, coming into the gym and I trained Pastor Jay. I call him Dr. J to this day. And um, I love I love these men and they make me better. I try to make them better. Um, but uh, they challenge me on the faith side. And when Pastor Jay asked me to speak at uh, his Shadow Mountain Church for Father's Day last year in 23, it was one of the highlights of my faith journey because it was just a couple of years in 2020, 21 and 22 where I went even deeper on my own faith through the pandemic because I dealt with a lot of physical pain. My second knee replacement, my back injury that left me in a lot of pain for over a year. If you read True Strength, you know all about you know that aspect. But most importantly, my faith journey um, really deepened during this time. And um, uh, to this day, heck, I mean, Impact X Performance, my new fitness and coaching franchise, faith is one of the pillars I mean, it doesn't exist today. And again, people have the option if they don't want to go deeper in faith, that's fine. They don't have to opt in for that. But I realize how important it is today as adults and in our younger generation, just how important faith is and our belief in God, how um, how important it is. So that's my faith journey. And my faith journey has deepened to the point where um, unequivocally, it's really um, my relationship with God and what does God want me to do and how can I serve the purpose he wants for me and for me uh, with IXP and the coaching and the speaking and everything I'm doing, even though I'm not always up on stage speaking of faith or I'm not, you know, I'm not always like, yeah, they're thumping Bibles, but you're showing up as you are and you're showing up to make people better and give them hope and inspiration inspiration and motivation and that. So that is my faith journey. And um, that's where I'm at. Um, each of you have your own journeys, whether you're of faith or you're not, but uh, S underscore Tollers, thank you for the question. Um, it's something that's near and dear to my heart. And as a father and as a husband and as a an entrepreneur and a believer, um, I'm very fortunate to, uh, to have some really great people in my life to keep, keep me uh, moving forward as well. So thank you for the question. Uh, number three, interesting enough. Hey, Todd, I'm a 12th grade student at Christian high school. I just went to chapel and I have a question for you. If you were able to travel back in time and give one piece of advice to yourself in high school, what would it be? Jackson B. Jackson, thanks for the question. Um, you know, I've answered this one before, so I'm going to answer it a different way today. And before, I used to say, don't worry about what everyone else thinks. Just be you. I used to spend too much time worrying about what everyone else thought. Um, and I was spending too much time thinking about what everyone else thought when really we all think about too much what other people think and forget it. Just like it's between you and the big man up top. Like, what do you want? What does he want you to do? And then do that that thing. So that's how I answered the, in in previous Today, I would say this, if you're to travel back in time, give one piece of advice to yourself in high school. Um, I think it's just because of where I'm at right now today. I would say I would have told my mom and dad even more how much I appreciate them. And I would have helped and served them even more. <laughs> I would have helped them even more. I would add more gratitude. I mean, think about high school. It's about us, right? Like here I was, I was a highly recruited athlete. And uh, I mean, I was in school and sports and it's like, how can, how can they help me? Well, really, if I could go back, I would have, I'd say to myself, how can I serve my parents more? You know, what could I do to help them more? Because the sacrifices parents make for their children, mm, you just don't know until you're a parent. You just don't know. And you parents out there know what I'm talking about. But I think about my three kids now at 21, 19 and, and 16, like, I guess I'd answer that question that way is why? Because my father, he died when I was 20 
and damn what I would do to have one more conversation with him. One more conversation. Just give me a half a day with my dad. He died 32 years ago. 32 years ago. What would I do? What would I say? Man, I'd go back to high school. I'd say, what would I what would I say to my dad? How could I serve my dad more? How could I pick him up? Why didn't I ask him more about his life? Right? Versus my dad was there at every practice and supporting me. And like, I wish I would have spent even more time with him. And I spent a lot of great time between 10 and 20 with my dad, but I would have spent even more time and told him I loved him even more. Hmm. And my mom, she's 91 on October 29th. Next week, as this drops, like, mom's not doing great. I mean, we call her Muffy. And I'm not sure why I'm getting all emotional today, but um, she lives down in Florida. And <laughs> fortunately, like I said, we got eight, eight kids in our family and there's a rotation. Uh, my sisters and brothers and all are going down there and, and helping mom out um, in Florida, but she's getting old. And, um, you know, if you have an aging parent, you know how tough that is. Um, but she's a tough cracker. She is a tough, tough cookie. And um, it makes you think like, what could I have done or said even more to her as a son? Like, so this question that Jackson asked about, you know, if you can go back now at this point, I'd be like, man, I would have lifted my parents up even more. I would have thanked them more, hugged them more. I would have spent more time with them because I look at my kids. And I'm like, kids, I, I, I just want your time. And like, hey, listen, you got a 16 year old daughter. She don't want your time. <laughs> like, she don't want your time. Uh, so what could I have done to be a better son for my dad, or what can I have done to help my mom out even more when I was younger? Heck, my mom did the laundry seven days a week, not three days a week, seven days a week. I was coming home with sweaty football clothes and she'd do the laundry at eight o'clock at night when I got home and have them ready for the next morning or basketball or baseball, like literally seven days a week. And then she was, you know, I'd eat her out of the house, a half a gallon of milk in the morning with my, my massive bowls of honey nut Cheerios. And I'd eat eight pancakes or whatever it was, but and then mom, you know, she paid for massage therapy school after college. She paid for that with the, 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 the not a lot of money she had. Like, here's the thing. No one knows what parents do until you're a parent yourself. And the worry, the stress, the making ends meet part. To answer your question, and Jackson, thank you for that question, is, man, I would have served more. I would have said thank you and I love you even more. I would have. I would have held my mom's hand more. I would have hugged my dad more and not been embarrassed to, to give him a hug. <laughs> you know, like, man, that's what I would say today as I, as I, as I answer that question. So Jackson, thank you for that question uh, there on, on number three. It's a good question. Um, interesting enough, uh, question four of five I want to answer is, um, and, and this is a, a question if i've been asked once i've been asked a thousand times i'm going to make this somewhat generic to protect the person who recently asked me this question um and i'll paraphrase it for you but it's someone a parent putting a ton of pressure on a young child with sport i'm in need of help um with my child um uh, he's just uh 10 years old and unfortunately um one of the parents is 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 rough on the on the child and has big expectations. And um, I've been a, a coach for 15 years, but at the end of the day, um, I need help in this area for my my spouse, and um, I need help in getting my son's confidence back. Um, my spouse was a Division One athlete, and um, and uh, as I paraphrase this, they're having a tough time. And it's heartbreaking to even reach out about this. Thank you for that question, because I get this question, honestly, several times a month. And I just want to share a couple things, because a 10-year-old or 11 or 12, like 10 to 12, 13 years old is very formative times. And for us parents, um, it's important. Number one, if you're a coach or you're a volunteer coach, please have a coach parent meeting and set the expectations for the parents on the sideline, parents outside when they get the kids in the car um, of, you know, what to say, what not to say. Um, it's really important if you're a volunteer coach, obviously if you are a coach um, is to have that coach parent meeting to set the expectations and have that meeting without the kids there. Um, hey, parents, remember this. It's not about us. 
it's not about us. It's about our kids. Um, I look at some of the athletes that I, I've worked with over my 25 plus year career. It's interesting, the higher the level athlete that the parent was, typically the less that that parent says to their child. It's many times um, the the parent who is vicariously living through their child and wants that kid to be the star athlete or to earn a scholarship or to play pro ball and is fueling their dreams and placing their dreams upon the child. And parents, we must remember it's not about us. Hey, I have a kid who's a senior in college right now uh, playing Division One football. And it's amazing that between age 10 and age 21, how much changes. What you don't want to do is be a dream killer. Do not be a dream killer. And parents, um, I know we're trying to many times fuel our kids' dreams, but sometimes that means biting our lip, biting our tongue, and only praising and encouraging your kids. Of course, you want to give feedback at the right time, but many kids burn out by the time they even get to high school because parents squash their dreams and constantly put them down. You know, as human beings, and I know this firsthand, it's way easier to find what's wrong versus what's right. Right. And and I've been as guilty as any of this is at least thinking this is it's easy to find the two or three or four plays where someone didn't do something right versus the 30 times they did something right. Like it's easy to find what went wrong versus what went right. It's the job of the parent to encourage and lift your kid up, find what they're doing right and praise them, encourage them. And how you do that is really important. So I share that with you because um, here in this case, the mom has such love for um, her husband and the son um, that she reached out to me as an objective source on that. I'm sharing it with each of us today because y'all can relate in some way, whether that's you as a parent or you were that kid who went through and, and your parent potentially um, uh, stole the fun and excitement. When I think about sport, like what's the purpose of sport? Like, what is it? And it's changing in today's landscape because of all the other stuff. I'll call it, quote, stuff that we deal with at the college and pro level with NIL and the amount of money that can be made. But at the youth level, man, we got to make sure that we lift our kids up and praise them. And they fall in love with the sport and fall in love with the process of the sport versus ripping the kids insides out and their dreams apart and they never even make it into high school or if they go to high school, they burn out by their junior year because we always are finding what's wrong versus what is right. So um, I share that with you and hopefully it resonates with that. But coaches, uh, thank you for what you do. Have the parent coaches meeting. Um, coaches, reach out to your parents. Um, and then parents, remember our job as a parent is to lift our kids up and and to help them be the best that they can possibly be um, on all aspects, right? So uh, great job on that question right there. And then last question, interesting enough, it is related to this previous question um, on this is, uh, hey, TD, I see you going to North Carolina every weekend to see your son, Luke, play his senior year. Is there a reason that you're doing this uh, every weekend? And how hard is it? <laughs> oh, man. Good question, Tim. Good question on this. Uh, let me tell you why I'm doing it. Because it is hard. It is hard. And I got to be honest with you. I'm going to get emotional again, but... I'm doing it because my dad would have done it for me. My dad would have done it for me. Uh, my pops, again, he passed my junior year in college. Um, he would have been to every game my senior year. I know that. And he would have done my, my fifth year because I took a fifth year too. And he didn't have any money, you know, and it's expensive to fly from San Diego to Davidson, North Carolina every weekend or wherever they're playing to go hang with my son and, uh, it's not convenient to fly across the country or again, wherever Davidson's going. Is it easy? No. Is it expensive? Yes. Um, is it hard with all I have going on with the franchise and all the other initiatives? Very, very challenging, but there is no other option because it's going to be over really soon. And will I regret it? Will I regret going to every game this season? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And here's how, here's what I would say as a father, and I'm going to go back and tie this all together with scripture again, because in Proverbs 22, 22, 6, it says, 
states that train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. Let me repeat that. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. See, it's my duty and responsibility as a father to be a man and to show my kids the right way to do things. The right way to do things. What's the right way to do things? The most important role and title that I have amongst all the different titles that I wear is dad, is the dad hat. And my legacy is through my kids and those I impact. And there's no one more important to me than my three kids. So me showing up and being in the stands, and it doesn't matter whether Luke is playing every game, starting every game, he's hurt or he's not playing, or he's playing at an All-American level. Like, it doesn't matter. My love is not based on the number of snaps he gets. Parents, our love is not determined by the success on the ball field, but it's being in the stands and being there to support and say, I love you, I'm sorry this is happening to you, or I'm so proud of you, whatever it is, because I could care less whether he plays at a conference MVP level, the All-American level, or he doesn't play a snap for whatever reason, like it doesn't matter to me, that does not impact my love for him or my desire to be there for him any less, right? So train up a child in the way he should go, even when he is old and he will not depart from it on that. So TC, Tim, thank you very much for that question. Um, that is why uh, I go back right now here in September, October, November uh, of 2024 each and every week to be there because someday I want my son or my daughter to do the same thing for their kids. So that's how you pass it on through legacy and through um, parenting. And it's not always easy, parents. And I'm not saying you got to go send your kids across the country to college and do that that's that's certainly a choice um but what i'm saying is be there for your kids and lift them up in the good times and the bad and when you got to sometimes bite your tongue because you want to say something maybe it just behooves you to um uh, well just to say i love you and i'm proud of you and i'm here for you train up a child in the way he should go even when he is old he will not depart from it that's a wrap, my friends. Thank you for today's Q&A episode. Um, again, we have our retreat November 14th to the 17th in Montana. And you're like, wait a second. How are you going to do the retreat, TD, um, when there's a Davidson football game? Let me tell you what. It's a bye week. <laughs> I literally, nine months ago when I got the schedule, I schedule my stuff around the kids' schedule. And it's a bye week. The football team doesn't have a game that weekend, so the retreat is November 14th to the 17th. I'm not missing the game because uh, there's no game. <laughs> so there you have it. An incredible episode today. I want to say thank you for being here today uh, on the episode. Um, go out there and have an incredible workout. Go make a difference today. Be the light, be the light, be the light. Whatever it takes, continue uh, to do your best. Thank you as always for sharing these episodes. It really helps uh, get this in the head and the heart of more people who are looking for more impact. So thank you for all of your ratings, your reviews, and you sharing it on your social media and your text message, your family and your friends. So until next time, remember, train hard, eat right live inspired and go create impact today. God bless y'all. Peace.